Hello, Roll Mithril here once again, getting back to Secret of Evermore, and we now have both the Diamond Eyes. So we need to go find Horus. We were told that he's over on the west bank of the river, so let's go track him down. I also went ahead and got the Bronze Spear up to level 3, so we can check out the new charge attacks. The level 1 charge is a slow forward toss of the spear that does not pierce. And Mike found us some roots, good boy. Meanwhile, the level 2 charge, it's the faster spear toss that does pierce. So, yeah, pretty much the same as the horn spear charges, nothing really that different about them. But hey, we have access to them now, so that's nice. I hear someone coming. Something seems... off. Ah, Joel. I'm glad to see that you're still alive. Have you found the diamond eyes? Hi, Horus. Yeah, I've got them right here. I must have them. Give them to me. Uh, okay. Here you go. And so we gave away the diamond eyes. They're mine! They're mine! The diamond eyes are mine! Guahaha! Guahaha? This guy is a loony, like Metalhead McGovern and Lunky Monkey. Come on, Mike, let's follow him. I think he's gone off the deep end. Not so fast, kid. Our boss wants you to stay where you are. And so we have a couple of rogues to deal with. Nothing we can't handle, though. And we get a hundred jewels for that. That was easy, but I think we've got a tough battle ahead. I don't think that guy who took the diamond eyes was Horus at all. Well, yeah, obviously. He was wearing the wrong color outfit. He looked pretty suspicious. I bet he's planning to use those diamonds for something devious. And he's probably going to the city on the other end of the desert. So, a little tale about the weapon grinding from last night. I just shouldn't do any level grinding when I'm tired. That's the major takeaway here. Much like that time that I trained a Mew to level 100 in one night thanks to Dodrio Tower, and then forgot to save the game... Yeah, something similar happened when I was grinding the level of the Bronze Spear. I got it all the way to level 3, and then went the wrong direction and advanced the plot. So I had to do it twice. Fun. Though, all that grinding... Hmm. I have a lot of money. So, there might be something else I can add to the to-do list for today. It will take a bit of setup, though. Level up for Joel, very nice. It's something that I didn't previously plan to do this quickly, but, uh... I also didn't plan to have that much money on hand. How do I miss the one right in front of me and not the one further back? Confounded indeed. How am I doing on ingredients anyway? I think, for the most part, we're pretty good. I'm just low on ones that we haven't found a vendor for yet. As well as Bone, but the only thing that that's useful for is the Revival formula at this point. So I don't really need more Bones just yet. Hey, Sparky. So, yeah, let's go. For my plan, I need to actually use up all the amulets that I have. You've been on my shuttle to Nobilia before, so I'll just be quiet and let you enjoy the ride. We don't have to use them all up with ferry rides, though. There is something else we can do, once we get to the marketplace.
like I said, I didn't really plan to do this, but if I have that much money on hand, I might as well. Just to get it out of the way. However, the marketplace is closed once again. Notably, this is the only other time that the market will ever close down. So if you didn't get that secret cache of 500 jewels earlier, this is your last chance to do it. But we already have that, so let's move on. Looks like we're a little too late, Mike. I will now command the ancient world with supreme power, for I have the diamond eyes of the sacred dog statue. This guy takes himself way too seriously, like Emperor Zorn in Acropolis Apocalypse. That's hard to say. Let the menacing begin! No, not the menacing! Anything but the menacing! And so, it's boss time. This is Aegeus. While he's displaying a crest on his head, you actually can't hurt him, and he can summon enemies including this one, which has a great name. Bad Dog! Yes, it's a clone of the prehistoric version of your dog. I don't think he can summon a sacred dog version, though. Also notable, don't bother with the bridges. They just blow up. They don't hurt you, though. But yes, he can uh, show different emblems on his head and summon different enemy types. That one lets him call Bone Buzzards, because we haven't had enough of those. Are they still called Bone Buzzard when he summons them out of curiosity? Skullclaw, okay, it is something different. A palette swap! Devious! I think he has at least one more mask type he can call on. There it is. For this one, he summons Will O Wisps. And apparently, they're Doggo's favorite treat. So at this point, we can pretty much go all out, because I think those are the only three masks he's got. Other than that, there's not really much to this fight. Pretty much just he summons mooks, and that's about it, and you can only hurt him while the mask is down. Or you can miss. And he's summoning dogs again. Aegis knows that dogs are powerful. Yet, his dogs aren't really doing that much. Basically, he can summon more mooks the farther into the fight you are. And there we go. We get 1,200 jewels. And for some reason, our spear is neon green. Whoa, that guy was a serious head case. There's the Horus we know. Good work, Joel. You saved our world from that terrible villain. He was my evil twin. And robot of some sort, I suspect. I'm glad we could help, Horus. Hmm. The statue's energy core looks like it could explode at any moment. We should remove it, and soon. Tiny! Tiny! Come here! We need your strength! I am Tiny the Barbarian. My strength is needed! We need you to throw this energy core as far as you can from the city before it explodes. Can you do it, Tiny? I am Tiny the Barbarian. I am very strong. I can throw anything! Step aside.
And away it goes. That felt good. Kaboom. That guy has a pretty good arm. Yes, and his heart is in the right place too. I just hope that his incredible strength doesn't go to his head. So, how do you suppose Mike and I could get to Podunk from here? I'd like to know that myself. I... I'm not sure. Horace, we have important news from the camp. Oh? Hello, Madronius. What is it? The explosive hit just north of the camp and opened up an entrance to a very large tunnel. This tunnel may lead to unexplored territories of Evermore. Hmm, a hidden tunnel. Very interesting indeed. Thank you for the news, Madronius. This could be your answer, Joel. Your passage to Podunk could start on the other end of that tunnel. Well, it's worth a try. Before you leave, let me help you. Please take this Staff of Life. It'll increase your ability to defend against enemy attacks. So we get the Staff of Life. Note that you only get the Staff of Life if you already have at least six call beads. Otherwise, you don't get it. Thanks, Horace. Let's go, Mike. If you miss getting the Staff of Life here, it is possible to get it later, but you'll need to stock up on rice because you have to trade rice for it and you won't be able to get rice in the place where you need to actually get it. For now though, we need to get rid of some Amulets of Annihilation. From this point on, the market will always be open, so if you have any more shopping you need to do, you can go ahead and do it here. Also notable, there's this stall here that I never went to. I appraise and purchase items from the market. My fee is 5 jewels per appraisal. Would you like for me to look at your items? Sure. What should I appraise? Annihilation amulets, please. You have three annihilation amulets. This is a piece of junk. If you paid more than two jewels, you got taken. I'd be willing to offer you 30 jewels. Two jewels? More than that would have been a ripoff, but you're willing to pay me more? Okay, I won't question it. So, did that take all of them, though? Yes, it did. We need one more for the ride back. So let's go down to 15 bags of rice. Okay, we only want one for now, though. Yeah, you know what I'm doing. So back we go. You've been on this shuttle before, so I'll just be quiet and let you enjoy the ride. So, yeah. Obviously what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and buy two more really expensive Amulets of Annihilation. Just to get the other charms that go with them. Which means we're going to have to go buy one, go across the desert, buy another amulet, come back across, get the last charm, go back across, stock back up on amulets so that we have the ones I need for later, and then cross again. We're probably going to fast forward through most of this. Basically, it's just one of those things, I have the means to get this out of the way, I may as well. I've been confounded! But I'm okay with reverse controls, really. They're not so bad here, actually. Confound actually does wear off over time, as well. Oh, right. I can't take you up the steps. Okay, that did make the reverse controls a bit confusing.
So that's one. The same joke. So we get an amulet. And the magic gourd. So the magic gourd. The powers of this special item are unknown. Oddly enough, that's kind of accurate. Except that we do know it does absolutely nothing in the game. I think I mentioned this before, but apparently the devs, they were planning on giving the Gordon ability, but it never got programmed in, and over time, they forgot what it was even going to be. So, indeed, the Gord has an unknown power. So back we go. <laughs> One more of these. That was weird. Apparently the door's hitboxes are kinda picky. Back we go. So this time we get the amulet and the wizard's coin. Wizard's coin. Magic defense is increased for the one who possesses this coin, so it gives us more protection against the enemy basically using alchemy on us. Nice. Once you have all three of the charms that this mad monk can give you, that is to say the magic gourd, the wizard's coin, and the chocobo egg, any time you buy an amulet from him from here on out, instead of a charm, he'll give you three meteorites, an alchemy ingredient. Unfortunately, despite the fact that meteorites are a very rare alchemy ingredient, due to what else is needed for the formula involved with meteorites, unfortunately there's not really a reason to do it. We'll get to that much, much later on. For now, though, we need to stock back up on amulets. So we start by stocking up on rice again. With that, time to stock up on amulets. We need five. Four for later trading, and one for the ride back. And with that, we should be good. Back we go. So with that, I think we have one more major thing to do before we're going to call it for now. And for that, we need to get back to the riverbank.
Still not enough, huh? There you go. Dog power! Hey, you saved us from our corrupt, depraved, and dishonest former leader. Good job. Please take this powerful double drain formula with my thanks. Uh, I'd like to equip that, actually. So, yes. It's a bit pricier, but more effective. And we'll just hit the wrong button. Good job. We'll get through this eventually. There we go. So yes, now we have the double drain formula. Let's see how this is at level zero. Not that much better, honestly. <laughs> but probably once it starts leveling up, it'll be a bit better. Overall, though, I'm going to guess having the healing spell is probably just overall better. But hey, we have it. Oh no, mosquitoes! New enemies have appeared here! Including horrible, terrible bugs. And, yeah, the river here at camp is gone. Also, Madronius is gone. Hello, kid. You look like you could use some rest. We've been at this a while, so let's go ahead and call it a night. So with that, thank you very much for watching, I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well.